Here's a problem. If we're given that this arrow indicates, uh, represents a sub x, and this arrow represents a sub y, find the overall vector a. Give that a shot. This is one of those no number problems. We can start by drawing a sub x. I'm not going to worry about making this arrow the same length as this arrow. The point of this was just that a sub x is pointing to the right, and a sub y is pointing up. Now I can draw a sub y. Again, I won't really worry about the length. I'm just trying to get the direction right. Now let's try drawing the overall vector. Well, the overall vector should start where we initially began and end where our components ended. So here's our overall vector, which is what we're trying to figure out. The components are what we were given, or told the tree was given. In order to indicate the direction, we're going to have to figure out this angle of theta. In order to uh, answer the question, we need a magnitude and a direction. Well, we were given these two sides, told to treat the two sides as given. When we're given two sides, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. Our symbol for the magnitude of the hypotenuse is going to be A. Now, what's our symbol for the leg? Well, one leg is A sub X. But I hope you put in a dot here, um, because remember we're dealing just with a length, and a length is a magnitude. Maybe it's not totally crucial here, because the squaring would get rid of any sign anyway, but it's still better to show that we're dealing with a length here by putting in the dot. And similarly, the length of the other leg is the magnitude of a sub y. Now, to get a by itself, we have to do the opposite. Take the square root. And we have to do that to both sides. If you start with a and you square it and you take its square root, you get back to a. So here's an expression for the magnitude of the overall vector, the square root of the magnitude of a sub x squared plus the magnitude of a sub y squared. Remember that when you're dealing with geometry and lengths, you're working with magnitudes, not signed components. So you want to use dots to indicate that those are magnitudes. We're not done until we figure out what this direction is over here. Well, we were given the adjacent and opposite sides, indicated by these asterisks. I'll put this asterisk here to show this is the angle we're focusing on, even though we weren't given it. When you're given opposite and adjacent sides, you want to focus on using your tangent. opposite side. Here it becomes very important that we should not plug in a sub y. We need to plug in only the magnitude of a sub y. Remember that trig functions can give you misleading answers if you plug in negative numbers for them. At least they will using the method that we've been learning in these videos. So we do not want to plug in a negative number here and to make sure of that we should just be plugging in the magnitude of a sub y. Here's where it comes in very handy to have a symbol for the magnitude. Otherwise it would be a little bit difficult to indicate that we're just using a magnitude here. We'd have to put in absolute value signs maybe which are much more cumbersome. Um, and of course on the bottom for the adjacent side we're just dealing with the magnitude of that. So anytime we're dealing with trig functions we're dealing with magnitudes. To get rid of this tangent we have to take the inverse tangent, the opposite. And then we have to take the inverse tangent of the right-hand side.
So theta is the inverse tangent of the magnitude of a sub y divided by the magnitude of a sub x. Now we've figured out everything we can about the overall vector using the information we were originally given. Remember that when I drew this overall vector here, um, I, uh, oh, so talking about uh, the direction, if you want the reader to understand what theta is, you have to draw them this picture so they can see where theta is. Or if you were going to describe it in words, how would we describe this in words? Well, is theta being bounded by the x or the y axis? You can see that theta here is bounded by the x axis. Positive or negative? Well, this vector is along the positive x axis. And is it above or below? It's above. So we could say um, here that we're forming an angle of inverse tangent of a sub y over a sub x above the positive x axis. What would have happened if I had drawn the y component first and then the x component? If I had drawn the y component first, and then the x component, we would, have ended up, we would have ended up figuring out this angle. And it turns out that if you figure out this angle, you will get the inverse tangent of a sub x divided by a sub y. For this angle, a sub x is on the bottom, but for this angle, a sub x is on the top. You can work that out if you want um, to prove that that's correct. So as usual, the angle that you get depends on the triangle that you get. Um, so you can solve for either of those angles. If that problem gave you difficulty, make sure that you redo it before proceeding.